Thank you. Thank you. You know, uh, this is something that's entirely new from the time that I was here teaching. And uh, it just amazes me to see the amount of money and the amount of kids that are going to college. I think back in my day, if I remember right, in 1947, uh, most of us were looking for a good job at either Swift's, Armors, Stockyards, Cudahy's, or Rifkin's. And that was about our uh, joy because we didn't have any money. Uh, we didn't uh, really study that hard in school. Uh, <laughs> and wouldn't you know, I get hung up with Dave Metzen. <laughs> Dave was like a stepson to us. Every night on his way home from uh, uh, practices and that, he stopped in and had dinner with us. My wife kept telling him, damn it, we've got eight kids of our own. We don't need another one. Then, of course, the topper came. Uh, uh, both of us had a little bit in common. Uh, when I graduated from high school, uh, uh, I don't know if there was anybody below me in the class or not, but uh, as I say, I was looking for a job at Swifts or Armors or one of them, and it ended up because of playing baseball and playing hockey, I got a chance to go to St. Thomas. As you can see, they didn't have much in the line of admission requirements in those days. <laughs> I think this is one of the greatest things that uh, uh, could possibly happen to the city of South St. Paul. Uh, you know, in our day, we didn't have much to look forward to. We had 50 beer joints down on Concord Street, uh, half of them selling uh, booze under the bar. And uh, Louis Fuller kept us straight and narrow during the World War II by simply going on out and, and uh, hitting all of the three two bars that had a bottle of whiskey under the bar and they were bootlegging. So Louis said, you want to stay open? Uh, you'll donate towards the athletic fund. <laughs> and uh, he bought uh, all kinds of athletic equipment and the police every day on their way to work would stop by at Wilson, Lincoln, down here at the high school field, Roosevelt and Washington and they'd drop off bats, balls, uh, footballs, uh, basketballs, etc. And uh, that was the way that uh, they kept us out of jail and uh, doing something that was decent. And so there's a, a great legacy from all of the, these kind of things, but uh, you kids are certainly the recipient of uh, some great generosity uh, of people here as well as others, and especially uh, for Dave to have the foresight to come up with something like this. Now, for the uh, Lefty and Mickey Smith Scholarship, uh, it's here presented to Andrew Nuritz. So many of us um, appreciate and recognize Lefty's legacy and the impact he had. I always think that one of the measures of a great coach um, is when you ask them about former players, the level of knowledge they have about them. The great ones can always tell you where a student athlete from 20 years ago is, what their family is like, and Lefty knew that about every one of his student athletes. Lefty and I probably first met when we were both about nine years old. He was at a local grade school in South St. Paul, Minnesota called Central, and I was at one in the north end of town called Lincoln. And our athletic careers began against each other, and then obviously as we both entered the uh, same high school, we became teammates. and. Uh, one of the funny stories, uh, I think it's funny, is uh, Lefty was really the main cog that got hockey going at South St. Paul High School. The uh, story has been retold many times. I was on the basketball team. We played a lot of pond hockey in those days, but there was no organized hockey at South St. Paul and Lefty kept badgering the school system and finally got the school system to agree to give us $600 to initiate the program. 
And when it was announced, the lefty walked onto the basketball floor at practice and invited to coach that Beaver Bedalich was going to be the net miner for the new hockey team. And the coach said, lefty, take him off the floor. He's all yours. One event that we all look forward to when we were going, uh, when we were going on a road trip, was to go to Duluth. And the reason we all love going to Duluth is because there's a restaurant there called, uh, I believe it was the, the Red Lantern Restaurant, and it was known for having 48-ounce prime ribs. And so we always look forward to the, the Thursday night before the Friday series because it was a comedy show that we all enjoyed. Uh, beyond anything that we, uh, you could ever see on TV or in movies, watching Lefty Smith and John Whitmer uh, trade barbs with each other uh, and see who could uh, insult the other more about how heavy they were or how much food they were having to eat. John Whitmer was our trainer for a lot of years. And I said, John, you're probably Lefty's closest friend other than Mickey and his family. He said, you can't sleep with somebody for 18 years and not know something about him. So John and Lefty were roommates on the road. Now, I don't think that would happen today. I think the coaches would all have singles, but they were roommates for 18 years traveling together. I learned a new vocabulary from Lefty. A lot of things that I didn't relate to uh, uh, hockey players before. Lefty had, a, he had different expressions that he used frequently on the ice. Usually when he was whacking his elbow on the glass behind the bench, he had colorful expressions that he used in calling each of us depending on how big of a mistake we made on the ice. Um, uh, lefty, I remember one time he had glass installed behind the bench that was a little thinner than the rest of the glass in the rink so that when he hit his elbow on it, it would give and he wouldn't hurt his elbow as much because oftentimes he would whack his elbow and he'd be swearing at the player at the same time as he'd be swearing about hurting his elbow when he hit it on the glass. But he was a very unique man and we all loved him. He was the kind of guy that I grew to appreciate more as I got older and realized the wisdom of a lot of the life lessons that he taught us all when he was coaching us. A thing that will always stick with me and I even use this with my students now is when we were playing somebody from a ritzy suburb like a diner, Lefty would always say, well, let's go out and get those cake eaters and he'd always call the opposition cake eaters especially if they were a little um, stuffy. We had two football players that played defense. Um, Eric Norrie and Jim Blaney, and they were both over 250 pounds, and when they were out on the ice, we used to laugh that the other team was skating downhill. <laughs> Lefty had a unique relationship with his players. He was often somebody who was very hard on the players, very demanding of his players, expected a lot of his players, but he was also the kind of guy that you knew deep down really cared about his players and he had a, um, a warm spot for each one of his players and in private he would reflect on those kinds of things with you and work on individual problems that you had. But it, at the rink, on the ice, uh, he was a very difficult taskmaster. When he's my science teacher and he it's great. He was a heck of a teacher. I always wonder how much I could have learned if he would have stayed for the whole hour. He left every 10 minutes for a cigarette break during the day. So. Well, I was the uh, student manager in 1983, which was our last year in the CCHA the first time around. And the one thing about Lefty that I always uh, remember fondly is how he uh, treated all the managers just as the same as all the players, with the same kindness and, and consideration and, and really made us feel like we were part of the team and, and uh, contributing to the team's success. And so that was, that's something I'll always be grateful for, to Lefty for doing, as well as just you know, teaching us how to, how to manage our lives, how to be organized, how to get other people organized, and, and how to, uh, teaching us how, really teaching us how to live, which, which uh, life skills that went so far beyond just what we learned in the classroom here at Notre Dame. No matter who you were and what your relationship with was with Lefty, you felt your bond was special, your relationship, your friendship um, was special, and it was. But how can one man have so many special relationships? That's truly why he's remarkable. Our relationship goes back a long ways from youth hockey in Wakota Arena. But I was one of the few players that stayed in South Bend after graduation, so my relationship with Lefty uh, really grew, and it was a different perspective as being a player as a coach and then getting to know him more as a friend. One of the things that I recall about Lefty, over my uh, working career, I've been in banking all my life. I've had six different employers, and Lefty played an integral role in getting me a job out of five of the six. So he's really been a good friend, and um, you're going to miss him a lot. 
he has a special place in a lot of people's hearts here in, in, in the college hockey. Lefty was just a wonderful guy. And I loved him dearly, I'll tell you. And the thing that really touched me was beyond being the hockey coach and the founder of the program was just the man that he was. I mean, I've never seen somebody who was so compassionate, so full of life, um, so engaged with everybody. I mean, he, he truly loved his players, he loved his friends, he loved his family. And I felt that that's, you know, these are the type of people that Notre Dame needs to celebrate. You know, it's really a seminal character uh, individual, I think, in the history of Notre Dame. And so we, we really felt that um, he needed to be remembered and celebrated within Notre Dame, and we wanted to do what we could do to help facilitate that. And the university wanted to do it as well. We're also very grateful to the Bowler family for uh, making a contribution to name the Lefty Smith rink after uh, a great man and a great coach. And we appreciate what they did uh, in helping us realize the dream, as, as well as Lefty uh, building this tremendous facility. In all my years, uh, having a chance to coach with Lefty, I don't think I ever had the opportunity to speak for him. But just this one time, I'd like to use some of Lefty's words in welcoming and saying how happy all of us in the Notre Dame hockey area are to have all of our former players and hockey alumni, friends and families uh, back for the Lefty Fest. And I think Lefty and I would be thanking you for the tremendous memories and just many good times. We were able to share with all of you.